Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit, and the precept that we are going to deal with today is forgiveness. And we are going to start this off in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Without forgiveness, we don't have a shot at God's kingdom. And if we're not forgiving others as we would have God forgive us, we don't have forgiveness from God. No forgiveness from God, no shot at his kingdom. Let's deal with the precept of forgiveness. Matthew 7, and brother, if you want to start off our lesson, let's do it in verse 12. 7 and 12, we're going to read one verse here in Matthew, brother. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So the law and the prophets, love your neighbor as yourself, how you want people to treat you is how you're supposed to treat them. And this is in all facets of the written word of God. Let's back it up one chapter and go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. And brother, we'll pick this up at verse 12. Let's see what Jesus said. Jesus gave us this prayer. 6 and 12. Go ahead, brother. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh-huh. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Jesus, when he taught us how to pray to our heavenly father, taught us to pray for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our debts or where we fall in short and sin, as we forgive others that do the same thing to us. And then he's going to expound on this a little bit. Verse 14, go ahead. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But what if you don't? But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's deep. Yeah. You got something against somebody because they did something to you? But then you do something to somebody else and you say, oh, you know, I'm really sorry, man. Can't you forgive me? There's no double standards with God like that. Let's prove this all through this short little direct precept. Let's go to 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. Not the gospel of John, the first letter of John. Back near the end of the book, right before Revelation. Well, you got Jude after John, but it's, it's back in the back. 1 John 2, 1 John 2, one verse, brother, verse 6, 2 and 6, go ahead. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So if you say you abide in Christ Jesus, you're supposed to walk like he did. And when he was on a cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. As he's getting killed, he's asking the, our heavenly father to forgive the ones that are killing them let's continue let's go to matthew the 18th chapter matthew the 18th chapter do you have that type of forgiveness in you because if you don't you have to work to the point that you can get it or die trying to get that type of forgiveness in you so you can be judged by your works lord i did the very best i could Matthew 18, brother, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. 18 and 21. Go ahead, brother. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto you thee, I say not unto thee, unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Now, Jesus isn't saying seven times. 70 times 7, and that's it. Start getting your, your little notebook and your pen, and I asked one. That's two. Ah, oh, he's getting closer. 488. He's getting there. Jesus said, as often as your brother comes to you, as often as he comes to you in sincerity and says, man, I've wronged you. I'm sorry. You forgive him. Because how many times you go before your heavenly father? I go before him daily. Sometimes, many times during the day, asking for forgiveness. This isn't a joke, sisters and brothers. It's a way of life. Back to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Back it up to the fifth chapter. Matthew 5, and let's read 23 and 24, brother. 5 and 23, go ahead. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, 
and there rememberest that thy brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. You don't even come before God if things aren't straight between you and everybody else around you. If you got anybody that you got a problem with or has got a problem with you, before you even come before the Lord, and you're supposed to be coming before the Lord always, praying always, before you even open your mouth toward the Lord, you go make things right with your brother or sister. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Sisters and brothers, I'm not saying it's easy. Nowhere in God's holy written word does he say it's easy. Because once you got your your ego is bruised and everything else, man, and somebody's wronged you and you've been hurt, your feelings are hurt, you start living in those emotions instead of living according to the word of God, causes all kinds of problems. Causes all kinds, sows discord, creates tail bearing, makes all kinds of sin come to the forefront. That's why forgiveness is part of love. And love covers a multitude of sins. Ephesians 4 and verse 31, brother, go ahead. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's all those lust of the flesh. Put all that garbage to the side because it don't mean nothing. I blinked my eyes and I went from playing as a kid, walking, uh, crawling across the carpet to being in the military. Blink my eyes again and I'm sitting in front of you. And when I stand up, I'm aching everywhere. This life is so temporal and so short compared to eternity. It's not worth all this little junk that's outside of this book, outside of God's holy written word. Find out how to walk and take hold of this. And the Lord will help you take all that junk out of your heart. Love covers a multitude of sins, sisters and brothers. Put all that lust of the flesh to the side. What are you supposed to be, brother? Go ahead. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Oh, brother Mike, you wronged me, man. So I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't never going to forget. <laughs> Whoa. Our Heavenly Father said, man, your sins are forgiven. It's like they never happened. He's not remembering. The only thing he's remembering is you're righteous by putting your name in a book of life. Mm. When you forgive someone, you're supposed to let it go. Just like a parent does with their children. Your child breaks a lamp 15 years ago. He comes over as a grown adult to your house for dinner. You don't keep throwing in his face about the lamp he broke 15 years ago. When you forgave him, it was done. It was over with. God's not a respecter of persons. It's no different. Because now you're an adult and somebody did something at the congregation or to your family or whatever the case might be, you're going to hold a grudge. Oh, yeah, I forgive them, but I ain't never going to forget. Now, if that's the case you want to stand by with that stiff-necked, hard-hearted stance, then that's between you and God. But we're showing you that the scriptures say something different than that. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians 3, and we're going to read... Three verses, brother, 12 through 14. Three and 12, go ahead. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Those fruits of the Spirit, the ones that say you've taken hold of the covenant, not those wicked uh, lusts of the flesh that say, oh, you, you're supposed to have taken hold of the covenant, but you got the wrong heart. Go ahead, brother. 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Even as Christ forgave you. Christ forgave mankind so much that when he was suffering and dying, he asked our Heavenly Father to forgive the ones doing it. Look at the example of Stephen. He's being stoned. The last words out of his mouth with the last breath of life before the father took that spirit of the breath back to him was forgive them, father. They know not what they do. Sisters and brothers, Jesus gave us an example. He had examples written all over this book on how we're supposed to forgive our neighbor. Go ahead and continue, brother. 
14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Be thou, walk before me and be thou perfect. Mm. The bond of perfectness, love, because it covers a multitude of sins. Last place, Matthew, the 18th chapter. Sisters and brothers, I keep telling you that forgiveness has to be from the heart. We've read it once. We're going to read it again. Matthew 18. And pick it up at verse 34, brother, and, and read the rest of that chapter. Matthew 18 and 34. Go ahead. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So this is about a man that was forgiven of a great debt. And then he took a, another man that owed him a small debt and held his feet to the fire. And then... The man that had that great debt that he forgave found out about it. Now he's coming to that man that held the man that owed him barely anything, and he's going to punish him for his wickedness. And then Jesus is using that parable as this example, and he's going to make a point here. And he says his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. And what's our Heavenly Father going to do, brother? So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Sisters and brothers, you have to forgive from your hearts everyone that does wrong against you, especially no matter what the wrong was. When they come to you in sincerity and say, man, I'm so sorry, sister, brother, that was wrong of me. Please forgive me. I never meant to hurt you or whatever. When you see that sincerity, you let it go. You forgive them and you let it go. And if you can't let it go, you throw yourself in prayer and you throw yourself at the grace and mercy of our Heavenly Father until that comes out of your heart. Sisters and brothers, this is, according to the scriptures, forgiveness. And as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word and hope you got something from this lesson.